Good morning and thank you for joining us for our midweek devotion from Unity Baptist Church here in Champaign, Illinois. I just finished up the uh, book of Jonah and I wanted to go to the New Testament and I want to talk about the book of Philippians. There are some wonderful lessons to be learned in the book of Philippians. Uh, when I was a freshman in high school during study hall, uh, I spent my study hall reading the book of Philippians. I probably should have studied <laughs> my subjects a little better, but uh, I did get uh, an awful lot of instruction for my Christian life from the book of Philippians. Uh, I want to look, if you're going to study the book of Philippians, you have to get some background about the book because uh, a lot of what Paul says in the book of Philippians relates to the history of the city of Philippi. And so in Acts chapter 16, if you're going to study Philippians, you need to start in Acts uh, chapter 16. And I just want to read a few verses from Acts chapter 16, uh, verses 6 through 10 in, uh, in this book to just give you a little background about the Apostle Paul and the city of Philippi says they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia. These are uh, kind of states, I guess you could say, or regions in the Roman Empire. And they had been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia, another province of the Roman Empire. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. Passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas, and during the night, Paul had a vision in which a Macedonian man was standing and pleading with him, cross over to Macedonia and help us. After he had seen the vision, we immediately made efforts to set out for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. The city of Philippi was founded in 357 BC by Philip of Macedon, who was the father of Alexander the Great. And this city uh, was about 700 miles from the city of Rome, but it enjoyed full citizenship in the city of Rome. And the reason for that is that years before, the Roman army, who paid their soldiers with salt, uh, ran out of salt and and the soldiers were not going to fight and risk their lives without pay and and if if they did not get salt and and thereby able to pay their soldiers uh, Macedonia was going to be lost to the Roman Empire and so the city of Philippi and the citizens of, of Philippi, who desired to be ruled by Rome instead of by the Macedonians, uh, basically took up an offering, and it was an offering of salt. And, and they gathered salt together, gave it to the Roman army, and as a reward for that, uh, they were allowed to become a colony of Rome. And what that meant was that they enjoyed full Roman citizenship. Even though they were 700 miles from Rome, they were citizens of the city of Rome because of what they had given to the Roman army uh, in salt. Uh, many of the soldiers who were stationed in Philippi, when they were released from the army, stayed in Philippi. And so it became known as Little Rome uh, the phrase that we get, you know, a man is not worth his salt, uh, comes from the fact that the Roman soldiers were paid in salt. And so, um, you know, in that sense, it is uh, still applicable, or at least it touches our lives today, at least in that phrase. Philippi is an important city because it was the first city in, in Europe to receive the gospel. And, and the Apostle Paul went there, and we'll talk in the coming weeks about what he did there and how that church got established and the wonderful things that took place in the city of Philippi. Now, this letter to the Philippians that we will be looking at over the next several weeks was written around 52 AD, 
Uh, it was about 10 years after Paul's first visit, the one that he's talking about here in the book of uh, Acts chapter 16. So about 10 years after this, when Paul finally went in at the prompting of that vision of the Macedonian man appealing with them to come and help them, and and Paul and his companions going in to Macedonia to preach the gospel at Philippi, 10 years after that, Paul sits down and writes this letter because Paul had had gotten uh, had been sent to prison and the Philippians heard about it and and they again sent an offering to the Apostle Paul and he is writing to them to thank them for thinking about him and for taking up this offering for them and and besides what we might call the thank you note of the book of Philippians, Paul also gave them some very important instruction in the Christian life and how the Christian life is to be lived. And that instruction can apply to us today. There are three applications I wanna make from, from this as sort of an introduction to the book of Philippians and to the ministry at Philippi today. The city still exists uh, in Greece uh, it's just uh, to the east of uh, Salonica, which we know in the scriptures as Thessalonica. But uh, uh, Thessalonica is a major seaport city in Greece. And, and the city of Philippi, or at least the ruins of the ancient city, are uh, still there today. So, uh, you know, I want to make some applications here, just three. Uh, as we draw this to a close today. And the first thing is this, uh, just to take with us today in, in our lives as believers, remember these things. First of all, if we truly want to know God's will, he will reveal it to us. We, we see back in uh, beginning at verse number six of uh, Acts 16, that they were trying to discern the will of God. And so they, they didn't know exactly where it was they needed to go. And, and so they went through Phrygia, went through Galatia, they went through Asia, they came to Mysia. And all of these times they're trying to, to make a way. But for some reason, the Spirit of God forbid them from going in. And, and basically they didn't know what to do. And, and so, but they wanted to know what to do and they wanted to know what was the, the next best step for them to take in order to uh, advance the gospel in, uh, in, in terms of preaching the word of God to people. And so uh, God gave them this vision, come over into Macedonia and help us. And, and so they decided that that is what they will do. You know, I think we talk about the will of God sometimes very flippantly. Um, well, it was, it's the will of God. And, uh, you know, well, you know, many times it isn't God's will. It's our will that we want to pawn off on God because actually it's really what we want to do. But if we really, truly, sincerely desire to know God's will, then God is going to reveal that to us. And, uh, you know, Jeremiah talked about, uh, quoted the Lord and he said, and you shall seek me and you shall find me if you search for me with all of your heart. You know, a lot of times, and I mentioned this just a moment ago, but a lot of times what we like to tag as the will of God is really our will and and not his will, because we're really not seeking God's will. We're seeking our way. Paul and his, his uh, companions were seeking God's will. And God said, okay, I'll tell you what I want you to do, and I will direct you in this. And as a result of that, a, a wonderful church was established in the city of Philippi. Secondly, Second thing I think in terms of application is, is that discerning God's will oftentimes 
involves reviewing the circumstance of our life. And, and what I mean by that, and I'm talking about within the truth of God's word that we know. I'm not talking about violating the, the will of God or the word of God. I'm talking about within the confines of the truth that we know, we've got to look at the circumstances of our life and discern in that what God wants us to do. Now, that's certainly what Paul says here in in verse number uh, 10, I believe it is. After he had seen the vision, we immediately made efforts to set out for Macedonia. And we could ask the question, why did you do that? You were so confused before. Well, he says, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. They made a judgment about what God was saying to them in giving them this vision. Go to Macedonia, help them. Well, help them in what way? Help them in preaching the gospel to them. Sometimes discerning God's will involves our, the, you know, determining, looking at what the circumstances of our life for, and in doing that through our discernment, the Lord opens up the door for us to see this is the way. Walk in it. This is the way you need to go. And then thirdly, uh, our commission is to reach all people. You know, the Apostle Paul did not... Uh, say, you know, I, I don't want to go over there. I, I, I don't want to go there because these are not my people. These, these are heathens. These are idol worshipers. These are really despicable people. And all of that, the, all of that would have been true, but that wasn't the issue. The issue was the gospel. And the gospel is given to preach to all people. What happens after that is out of our hands, but our responsibility, our job, is to share the gospel with those around us, whoever they are, whatever their ethnicity, whatever their background, whatever their lifestyle, whatever the color of their skin, whatever their political positions might be. Our responsibility is to share the gospel with them. And I pray today, as you go out into the world, as you live out your day, that you will remember this. If I really want to know God's will, I mean really want to know God's will for my life, he'll reveal it to you. And secondly, that desire often means uh, reviewing the circumstances of our life within the context of God's truth. And, and then finally, to understand that wherever I go today, whoever I meet, my commission is to share the gospel with them. That's our commission. That's our responsibility. God will take care of the saving. Our responsibility is to share the good news of the gospel with them. Father, I pray today as we go out into this world that we will go to shine as lights that we will be the salt of the earth, which you have already told us we are, and that we might shine as lights and hold forth the word of God and, and share the gospel of Christ with those around us. Help us to seek your will, to know your will, and to fulfill the commission you have given us today. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Hope to see you next time.